So, how many of you have heard about the, the fourth industrial revolution? Me. Yeah? Yes, so in our video it's really clear that uh, uh, from the uh, industry one to the four the changes. So industry four is uh, predominantly with the connecting with the, uh, devices and through the cloud and so that's where I look at it. Yes, very good, very good. Well explained. So the fourth industrial revolution in 2009, when I did the um, strategy for Germany, Henning Kagerman and Professor Scher. Henning Kagerman is co-founder of SAP. You all know SAP, I presume. And Professor Scher is the co-founder of um, the Scher at IDC, which is, uh, the, is the thinking of all pro process thinking. These two guys, they are giants in Germany. They're like mastodons coming in. Um, and so I was asked together with them to do the strategy for Germany. And Germany is very focused on pro um, um, manufacturing. That's 70% of their industry. So part of that we focused on there was manufacturing. And how do we get the manufacturing up and running? And Germany, if you look at the overall overarching view, Germany is Europe. They're like the pumping heart. The beat they're giving out is the beat that is coming out. It's like, shoo, shoo. And Germany's productivity level was not very good. So they asked us, say, how can we actually get Germany up and running as a country? So we gathered all together and we looked at good, what is changing? And we discovered in 2009, something is changing that hasn't happened before. We discovered five trends that are colliding into one. And what normally happens in organization is that you have, you have an organization or a country and you have one force and that force you have five to ten years to react on and because it's one force everybody around them competition they can react because it's a force and they can react but when a force when many forces collide at the same time they give an exponential um, of, um, growth to it it happens exponentially faster and that means the adaption curve has to be faster and that is a challenge by design. So what happened in 2009 is that mobile, the Internet of Things, consumer demands, big data all collided into one. And then the connectivity. So we call this the digital agenda in 2009. And the European Union a half year later was really excited. And all European countries should um, implement it. That's called the Agenda 2020, Digital Agenda 2020. All European countries have applied it. But we realized something a half year later. They were drinking their beer, I was drinking my water. And then we were sitting and talking, you know what? It's even worse than what we think. It's even worse than what we think. We saw, and I will come back to that slide in a second, we saw that 17 trends were colliding together. And we saw, it's not like the digital agenda, it's five trends that is merging into one. No, each of these trends is so significant it's like when you hit on the water, the wave will emerge and it will affect all of them. And these changes, these 17 trends have not changed since 2011, since we announced it. The consultant companies, they have been telling stories about IoT and the robotics and so on. But the 17 trends haven't changed. They have just selected, the, the consultant companies have just selected the messages that they want to repackage their sales, but the trends haven't changed. And fundamentally, the fourth industrial revolution, and Sheikh said it um, good, the fourth industrial revolution is the colliding of three worlds together. It's a digital world, it's the physical world, and it's the virtual world. You have your phone here. This is a digital device. I can connect with all devices around me. I can connect with the projector if it should zoom better. I could connect the, to, to, to with the camera. I could connect with many things. Digital device. This is a physical device because it's very hands-on. But I can also digitally, I could scan, for example, what is the size here? So this is becomes a digital physical device and becomes a virtual device because I can be on my manufacturing plant and can see good how is the performance i can have a skype meeting i can have so i can use this as a virtual device that is happening and these three worlds they're colliding together in all aspects of our life 
how our economy works, how we consume, how we live, how we work, how we interact. This is a change that nobody has seen in the speed of time in any generations before than what we are undergoing. We're the generations that are undergoing the biggest change in the fastest speed ever. There's nothing to fear about this because we are, we are human beings and human beings, the centerpiece of the fourth industrial revolution is you and you and you because people adapt to changes. Robots will not take over our job. Artificial intelligence will not take over. Artificial intelligence will enable all of this. Artificial intelligence will govern us. Robots will not control us. Fire never took over. You know, it's, it's like when you go back to the first couple industrial revolutions. The first one, of course, there was winner and losers there in the water and power. Because you got, suddenly got water, so you could do the mining differently, you can do um, the wool production differently, suddenly you could do things differently. Suddenly you came to the second one, elect ele electricity and horsepower and suddenly, I mean, of course, agriculture changed, of course, transportation changed, of course, all these things. But it just shifted people from one area to the other area. Today, when we have um, a maize field, a harvest field, we don't have 40 people in there. We have one big machine. But the 40 people are just doing something else today. So this is, there's nothing to fear in this. It's just about the skills we apply and how we apply our skills. So the element I wanted to tell you about this, this is a quite important one. Each of these are fundamental changes and they change the way we live today but they're all based on manufacturing. The last one is rooted in manufacturing, but it goes out to all of them. Do you know why it's based on manufacturing all the time? Take a guess. Because that's the labor. It's, it's the labor, yes. Every country, every industry walks on manufacturing. It doesn't matter if UAE says, well, they're not manufacturing, they're doing oil. So petrochemical, that's hardcore manufacturing, you know, they drill out the oil and they're manufacturing and then they ship it. So any country you look at, manufacturing is always the backbone. They might call it when you are in Kenya, well, no, we just do agriculture. It's still manufacturing, they produce something. This is the same thing. So every country, every industry is always based on manufacturing. Then you have service industries and transportation industries around it but the backbone is always manufacturing. So any country, any, any um, government or anything always needs to have two elements to it, productivity and growth. This is some sort of the shortest thing. Good. This is the interesting thing. So a revolution never emerges in its full form. It emerges like an evolution. So in reality, so the first wave has already happened. So, so the first wave is digitalization, advanced analytics, cloud, augmented reality, and um, robotics. Why is this first wave really important? The first wave focus on, um, on manufacturing, but for any organizations, it will focus on productivity, operational ex excellence, cost cuttings. This is a really, really important element. This is called the digitalization. You need to digitalize. You need to connect. This is where you connect. In governments, you connect the departments, you connect e-voting, you connect all the parts that you need to, to be digital. So digitalization is not a requirement um, to grow. Digitalization is a requirement to be part of the game today. How can I put this in, in a different way? When you run or run 100 meters, you cannot run 100 meters if you cannot walk. So digitalization is the ability to walk because I connect with everybody around you. I can communicate with you via my phone. 
I can communicate via a, 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 um, a, a, any thing devices. So digitalization is just the ability to connect, receive information and send information out. That's it. This can increase your operational excellence, your effectiveness, your efficiency, your productivity level. So in this area, you can focus on everything where you, we need, I need to have a high level of integration, optimization and alignment. Really, really important. So many consultant companies will sell you like you will get any competitive advantage out of this. I can already tell you, you will get absolutely no competitive advantage out of this. They've been selling you hot air. Why can you not get competitive advantage out of something that everybody else does? It's the same. It's got to monetize, right? If you want to win, win the race, you're not winning the race by just taking your training shoes on and saying, okay, I have my suits on, now I can run. No, this is not giving you an advantage. The second wave is a very different wave. And I want to stop here a little bit because this is like, I mentioned before, this is like you hit the hand on the water. Artificial intelligence has been around for 25 years. There's no rocket science to it. But artificial intelligence is changing exponentially on how you apply it and how you view it and how it's used. So at the World Economic Forum, the definition we did with all the professors on artificial intelligence is, I should ask the artificial intelligence guy, what is artificial intelligence? And then I can explain what it is. <laughs> 